Hey guys, welcome to my Ocean One and Then Some channel. And I'll be going over my trade this week for Rivian, which uh, didn't go my way. It was a very interesting week, so I'm going to walk you through what I did. Now, I have been experimenting with the lighting down here, and I'm telling you, no matter what I do in this basement with these uh, dry erase boards, I seem to have a reflection, so I've moved the lighting around. I've turned the ceiling lights off, and now I have a shade uh, from myself. I'll just, I'm will just i going to have to keep experimenting with it. Maybe I'll eventually figure something out. But I, it's not going to affect anything because I'm going to tell everybody about my trades. But before I get into the trade that I did this week and last week and how I wrapped it up, uh, let's get the YouTube disclaimers out of the way. None of my content constitutes professional advice. Viewers that follow any advice, content, suggestions, trades, anything from this channel, do so at their own risk because you are responsible for your own actions. All right, let's jump right into it. If you followed Rivian this week, it was a wild week with big swings. And if you were a trader and you traded off every swing, you probably did pretty well. Now, I'm not a trader in that sense. I pretty much just set my trades and I forget it. And I kind of take advantage of opportunistic times. And I almost did this week. And then I said, no, nah, I'm just going to let it ride. And so I did. Um, bottom line is I could have closed up my position for, you know, a pretty good profit. And I decided not to. I felt like that we would still probably close over 1150 by Friday, and we did not. But before I get into all of that, I want to read a small um, article here uh, that, that will explain some of my thoughts in a few minutes. Now, this article is from investing.com, and it's one of the reasons that I think we had such a dramatic move and the share price, I'm having trouble finding my cursor. Oh, okay, it got unplugged. All right, now if we can roll this around. Give me just a second. Okay, yeah, that was a tough one. Um, my mouse was having problems. But anyway, I wanna read you this because this is necessary to understand my thinking and how the trade went this week since there were so many dramatic swings with the stock. And again, this is by investing.com and it says in a recent transaction, a Rivian Automotive uh, RJ, I don't know how to pronounce his last name exactly right, so I'm just going to call him RJ, sold 71,429 shares of the company stock totaling over $820,000. This sale was executed under a pre-arranged rule 10B5-1 trading plan which allows company insiders to sell shares at a predetermined time to avoid accusations of insider trading. The shares were sold at prices ranging from $11.39 to $11.65 with weighted average per share around $11.49. This transaction was automatically carried out according to the trading plan adopted March the 8th, detailed uh, in the quarterly report filed with the SEC on May the 7th. On the same day, RJ also acquired 71,429 shares um, is that the same amount? Yes, that is the exact same amount of shares. On the same day, RJ also acquired 71,429 shares of Rivian's Class A common stock at a price of $2.62 per share, amounting to a total of 187000 So, <clears throat> if you look at this, you know, the market sees that he is selling shares. They also don't see that he is buying shares. Of course, they're at a discount because that's, you know, that's what uh, these people get to do. You know, that's that's part of their package. Uh, so the market sees that he has sold shares. That goes into the news headlines. And personally, I think that's why we got the sell-off Thursday and Friday, the dramatic sell-off, actually, that we had. Uh, you know, I still thought 1150 would probably hold. Uh, it did not, so I'm going to walk you through the actions that I took and kind of explain my thoughts as the week went. Okay, let's recap what I did on Monday to make sense of this. On June the 10th, which was Monday, I sold to open two 1150 puts at .39. So I got paid $78, and I said a winning trade is Rivian closing this Friday at 1111 or above. Now that didn't happen, it closed below 11.11. Actually, I don't have up here what it closed at. What did it close at, like 10.80, something like that? We could look that up very quickly. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because that's not how I address the trade. 
I did not get assigned <clears throat> to purchase the shares because I decided, I felt like, you know, if you look here, this is last week, okay? This is for Monday of last week, so 11.29, Tuesday 11.22, Wednesday 11.36, Thursday 11.74, Friday 11.52. So you can see that, you know, Rivian is clearly in an uptrend. <clears throat> so what changed? <clears throat> uh, Monday of this week, we're at 11.87. Tuesday of this week, 11.83. Wednesday of this week, 11.80. Thursday of this week is when we started to get in the sell-off because of RJ selling shares. Dropped to 11.11. And if you remember, we had a spike in here. What was it? Like 12.46, somewhere around that area. And then I think we closed around 10.80-ish without me looking it up. But what I decided to do was... I decided not to get assigned these shares, and I decided to take kind, kind of an aggressive approach because I felt like the sell-off was unjustified. So even though I had a losing trade, what I decided to do was, uh, what time was it? I made a note here. Around 12.26 today, I decided to exit the trade in this fashion. So what I did is I, I bought to close at 0.65. So that, you know, that was a losing trade in the sense that I got paid 0.39 and I had to turn around and buy the close for 0.65. So I did lose a little bit of money on this trade. I didn't lose much, but I did lose a lot. So 40, not a lot, 40, 25. I lost basically 50 bucks on this trade. So what I decided to do was I bought that back for $131. You know, the, the trade simply didn't go my way because it didn't hold the 1150 and we had the big sell off. So what I decided to do was I decided to turn right back around and sell to open after I close this trade. I could have rolled it, but generally I don't. Generally, I just close a trade and buy another one. You can roll it. There is no difference other than a small fee. Um, there, there's just no difference in that. When you roll a trade, you are closing a trade and starting another trade. But anyway... I bought the close, so I exited this trade, lost roughly 50 bucks on it. Then I turned right back around and I sold to open the 12s, the $12 for $1.23, so I got paid $246. So what that did is that turned around and that put me up in the trade, even though I had a losing trade. Now, what I don't know, though, is I won't know if I get to keep the $246 until next Friday. So we'll have to see where it closes for Friday if that was a good trade or not. So uh, what I did was I paused the video and I went and looked at what Rivian closed at today. And it closed at $10.88. So I felt like the better play here, and this is personally just a judgment call. You have to decide what trades are right for you. So I decided that turning right back around and selling the $12 puts even though, you know, it's clearly way out of the money, I uh, wanted to go ahead and do that because I felt like the sell-off here on after the spike Wednesday where we spiked all the way up to 1246, I felt like the sell-off was just unjustified. Now, something else that I did was, do I have a note of it up here? No, I forgot about that. I'd made enough money on my selling of calls and puts to purchase a long call. So I'm going to stop the video and refresh my memory on what long call I purchased. I think I remember it, but I don't want to be wrong on it. So I'm going to pause it and then write it down. So I went and looked up what my trade was for. So let's see, right here, um, I'd made enough, uh, get back on the camera, I'd made enough money selling calls and puts to have an extra, I don't know what I had, four or $500, I think it was. Uh, so what I decided to do was, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to play the long game with Rivian anyway, and I'm going to be trading my shares in and out, you know, with puts and calls and stuff like that. And I said, well, you know, let's hedge for the long term just in case Rivian gets a big run later in the year. So what I decided to do, now I only hedged for the upside, okay, I didn't hedge for the downside. Uh, what I decided to do was I bought, bought to open. This is the first time in my videos that I've actually paid for anything, if that makes any sense. I bought to open one $10 call for January the 17th of 2025. Now, that's pretty far out. That's, what, roughly seven months? July, August, September, October, November, December, January. Yeah, roughly seven months. 
So seven months from now, what that means is I can purchase Rivian shares, 100 shares, for $10 a share. Now, what did I pay for that? I paid $3.20, but, you know, you have to multiply that by 100. So I paid $320. So for a winning trade on this call that I bought, I need Rivian to be above that plus that. So 1320, I needed to be above 1320 to have a winning trade because you take your strike price and then you take the price that I paid. So you add that up, that's 1320. So as long as Rivian closes on January the 17th above 1320, that's a winning trade for me. And that also helps, you know, if we get a big run, we get news. I'm, I'm not sitting there worried about, you know, okay, my calls and puts. My calls and puts are for a recurring income. This is not for a recurring income. This is hoping you get a big payday later at the end of the year. So I'm taking that risk as a buyer and a seller is taking that risk because Rivian could close, you know, here at $5 a share or it could close at 50. Okay. So, you know, you have to decide what trade is right for you. So what I wanted to do with this video is I wanted to walk you guys through what I did as far as taking action and then Sunday, I'll do a video showing where all of my trades landed in the week. And then we won't know how this one turns out until Friday. So again, the purpose of this channel is just to walk you through my own trades. And when you have questions, you know, you can just write in and ask me, you know, hopefully this channel is helping you some. I don't want to overwhelm you with, you know, jargon. So I'm definitely not going to do that because I don't even like using the jargon. It's very simple. You're a seller of insurance and you try to make a profit each week and you're not going to win every trade. This week was a perfect example. You know, Wednesday it looked like 1150 puts were perfectly safe. Uh, Thursday rolled around and then Friday rolled around, put the hammer on it. So, you know, uh, the IV, the implied volatility with Rivian is very strong. It's very high. So it does make for a good trading of Rivian. It also makes for good selling of calls and puts. All right, guys, that wraps it up for today. I'll do another video Sunday and kind of uh, show all of my trades. I'll have this better organized to start the new week. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining in. And if you're enjoying my content, just subscribe. I'll always try to keep you updated on these trades the best that I can. All right, until next time.